Okay, I'm going to make my tools a little bit bigger so you can see them on the screen. I'm still just using a regular raster layer using the brush tool with black ink at 100% opacity, 100% flow. I've settled on a smoothness of about 60% because I'm not doing a lot of fine uh, details and angle changes anymore. I put the vaccine on a separate layer because I'm not sure I'm going to use that or not. But I'm going to try to finish inking of this top half. And the only kind of tools I'm using are the, the brush pen and the eraser, both at 100%, both at 100% um, hardness as well, and just varying the sizes a little bit between kind of 7 and 14 or 15. And when I want to darken or re-ink something, I just push over it again. Just like I would with an ink pen of a fixed weight. If I had a tablet and a stylus and I was using that, I could just push harder to make the line thicker. But in some ways, it's beneficial to be able to go over the lines twice. And my usual tip to students when they are digital inking is to go just a little bit thicker with your lines than you think you're comfortable with. Because the tendency is to go a little too thin. And if we're going to go through all this effort, we want our lines to, to matter. So the thickness of them will help the overall image. Sometimes students will ink with such a thin line that I actually have to show them how to duplicate it, add a blur to it, and then uh, copy that, that blurred line over and over into multiple layers, make them all multiply layers so they all stack on top of each other just to kind of thicken their line, to kind of bold it up so it shows up. So don't be afraid of your line weight. It's going to really help the end product. And if you don't like how thick and black every line looks, remember that part of digital coloring, it's called color holds. Kind of at the end, you can color over your black line and replace it with a color. And we'll see that in some of the, the slides and the demos next class. So for now, we're just trying to get the most satisfying line art that we can. That still has some of our own personality and approach to it. Just to remind you, because I haven't in a while, I'm going to go ahead and full bleed ink this knife handle. So I'm going to make it solid black and remind you how I do that. It's been a while. So I draw the edges of it. Just flow that curve through for the hand. So I want to get around these fingers. And then I'm going to close it up on the bottom. And because it's going to be full bleed, I'm only worried about the edge that doesn't get filled in as I'm inking. 
All right, so now I have something I can fill in with black, but I only want to fill it in where the hand of the, the shadow hand is. And that's going to be right here. So from here up, that handle is going to be black. So I take my paint bucket, I drop it in. I have contiguous and anti-alias turned on, but then I go back to my brush and I just knock out that little ridge that's left. So I want it to be like a solid puddle of ink. It's called full bleed because that's what the printers do. They flood that portion of the, the film work with ink. So full bleed inking has a lot of solid black shapes. You might decide to do that, you might not, but it's not something you need to be afraid of. And it can help you in the digital coloring phase because a lot of times when we have finished line art, we tend to be tentative choosing colors and we don't make them dark enough. And having some solid blacks in the mix to balance our colors off of, like you see there, helps us to make them more robust. Have fuller contrast. All right, for those fingers, I'm gonna to switch to a slightly smaller brush. Just because there's a lot of angle changes there. I don't want them to look any more like sausages than they have to. But remember, I said 300% is about as much as I ever want to zoom in. So this is a pretty delicate line I'm putting in now, even though at zoomed in at 300%, it can still look a little clunky. Come on. Yeah, the more smoothness you have, the more leg you're going to have in your tool. So you might decide you want to take that down a little bit in order to get a little bit more even flow from your brush on a browser-based program like Photopea. But that can be true even in Photoshop. The more complex your brush is, sometimes your tool will lag. You just want to make sure to close programs you don't need open. So that the program can perform at its best capacity. All right. Now the knife is a little bit more delicate than some of the other things I've been drawing. So I'm gonna keep it at this line weight and just try to have fun with it. As I've gotten more practice with this line weight, I've had to erase and correct less and less. But it seems to be like a new thing you learn with each drawing, because each drawing is a little different.
So on details like the hands and tools, I'll be zoomed in to do it. But most of the time, I want to ink at just 100%. But when there's a lot of kind of angle changes like this, it helps to be zoomed in a little bit. I end up making fewer mistakes. Ah, a tough angle. Try going up. There we go. Go a little bit thicker for the outside of the knife. come to its points. And I'll zoom out at just 100% for these bigger curves. Sometimes going really fast helps <laughs> for a swooping curve. This is where kind of vectors are tempting because you know you can really control the curve perfectly that way. but you don't want them to look too uh, mechanical either. So instead, I like to do kind of a few passes like that and then clean it up with the eraser. And I probably should have used the tilt tool and found a more advantageous angle too. It's just whatever you have the patience for. Now, a lot of character designers, when they do weapons, they will use kind of vector shapes, especially to do like handles of spears or sword blades, because you need those things to be perfectly straight, or it kind of takes all the illusion away from them. But I'm doing this kind of curved dagger, so I still want it to have some illustrative personality. And there's a rich history of tattoos of daggers and blades. And I want to kind of suggest that with this artwork. Ah. Three steps forward, two steps back, but we're getting there. Okay, so that's going to work. The inside of the blade. I just want to ink that top part. The bevels. It might be fun to have this be an open line. <laughs> 